What's the most high risk, low reward thing you've ever done? I once climbed an old truss bridge to get some new pictures of myself. I climbed under it and sat on the beams beneath the bridge. I climbed to the very top. I hung off the edge of the bridge above several rocks. Once I got done and showed the pictures to my friends and they said they sucked. Should have worn a Spider-Man costume. Would have made the whole ordeal look cooler. Come to think of it. Even then most people would have described the pictures as crap or mega crap. Sent my boss a glitter bomb. Never told anyone who sent it. The whole organization, thousands of people, know it happened. Boss flipped out when glitter went everywhere. I'll never tell anyone. That sounds like low risk, high reward. The posting it on Reddit is high risk, low reward though. Taking a year in a program I wasn't interested in to try and get a girl. Who turned me down instantly? Dick decisions are always the worst. Dick decisions are always the worst. I stole every wheel off the chairs in my high school's computer lab as a joke during a 20 minute break. I still have one of them as you probably could have gotten expelled just for a slightly funny joke. And a useless chair wheel. Well I'm glad it didn't have a permanent bearing on your future. I have nothing but respect for you. That is probably one of the greatest feats I've ever heard. Letting my mom count to zero. I was in band in high school. I had a friend from middle school that was also involved in athletics at the time and the two of us were outcasts among the greater band nerd population and often got talked down to. Which even our instructor would join in on from time to time. At the time flipping backpacks was popular. Taking things out of the backpack. Flipping the backpack inside out. Returning the items to the bag and zipping the bag back up. One day when we had a substitute in and he had the class watch the typical BS Mozart movie from the 80s again. I found a mega bag of zip ties and convinced my buddy to help me flip every student's backpack. Zip tie the bags closed. And then zip tie the bags into the instrument lockers while everyone watched the movie. If we got caught and reported the instructor 100% would have suspended us. So we were on extra edge and right as we were wrapping up the substitute locked eyes with us from across the room and realized what was going on and decided to pretend nothing happened and we completed the mission right on time. The class was very pissed as the lights flicked on and they saw what had unfolded. The substitute came back for a class later that year and talked to us saying he had to actively try not to lose his shit when he saw what was going on. I fucking love you Mr. Hudson. That dude was weighing up whether it was worth his time to bust you and decided it was not. Reporting you would have been a high effort low reward action for high monsieur. Whilst building a house, the second floor had an I-beam that extended R into nowhere that needed to be painted with rust. Protection paint. The floor had not been installed yet and the joists were still going in. To save time, I shimmied out to the end of the beam and started painting. Every breath of wind made the whole thing sway. Just my movements made it wiggle a fair bit. Nearly took a 6 meter swan dive to a concrete floor about 12 times. I could have painted it after the floor was in but that would mean laying down drop sheets and lots of messing around, should have waited, was a totally stupid thing to do. Balanced on the top rung of a 6 meter ladder to change a light bulb at work. Going way beyond the speed limit when I first started driving. When I think of the car stuff we tried when young, dot man I shouldn't be alive. I skipped class after a standardized test literally the afternoon teachers were showing movies and doing nothing and I decided it was smart to get in school suspension to sit behind a warehouse and nap with with my dumb ass friend. Were they good movies or those weird education documentaries on something dumb? Like those ones about the difference between singular and plural spelling or something. Cocaine, almost called 911, again. I got some cocaine with fentanyl in it about a year ago. Thankfully the guy the first was with at the time knew CPR. Got me breathing again. Drove me to the urn called my work saying that I wouldn't be there the next day for an obscure 
non-drug related reason, he is the real MVP. Holy shit that's super scary. I keep test kits on me now because a few people in my industry died from the same thing. Glad you made it less than 3. Cocaine with a couple strangers I met at a bar next to Waterloo Station in London as a lone woman. From another country. How tf I wasn't murdered or worse is beyond me. Happy coke day. Went to college. F. Stop reminding me of my grades. I moved across the country. California to Massachusetts. Because I saw my high school crush on a dating site. Turns out she won't date bald men under any circumstances. Hey, look, it's a middle-aged crisis as a Reddit comment. Nah, she just won't date you under any circumstances. Would you date someone who moved across the country to be with you before y'all leave and discuss it? Right WTF serious stalker tendencies. Robbing the bank, in Monopoly. I once went on a heater at the Luxor in Vegas. When it was over I had turned 60 bucks into 78k and change. I was drunk with excitement. It was 8am Saturday. On the way to the cage. Shadowed by three floor guys. I spied an empty blackjack table. I walked over to it and asked one of the floor guys with me if I could bet it all in one hand. The table has a 5k limit. He nodded okay. Double A. I had no money to split. After two hits we end up pushing on a 17 and I avoided what would have been the most stupid, embarrassing thing I have ever done. So basically you were an idiot bailed out by fate. You are telling the truth. I don't gamble so I don't know what pushing on a 17 means. Does that mean you made it out with the money? Their hands were tied at 17 total. No money was won or lost. It was a tie. Nobody wins player gets money back. Reddit at 2 a.m. When I was about 7, there was some kind of meeting we had at school where the school counselor was asking a large group of us if there was anything we were sad or mad about. I think it was basically meant as an introduction to the concept of a counselor. I was sad that my great-grandmother had recently died, and I mentioned it. The counselor told me that it was okay to be sad, that there's a grieving process etc. You know, the regular advice for that sort of thing. But for some bizarre reason, what I told my mother later was completely different. To this day I cannot figure out why I did this, I don't remember disliking the counselor or anything like that. The only thing I can think of is that maybe I was doing one of those nonsensical, what happens if I do this thing, experiments that all kids do. I told my mom that the counselor had told me, you need to just forget about it and move on with your life. I had no idea what can of worms I had just opened. My mom was livid. Over the course of the next few days, she called the school asking why the counselor would say something like that to me and she discussed it with a few different people. They asked what the counselor's exact words were according to me. And my mom sat down and began to write a letter to make it into a formal complaint. She asked me what exactly the counselor said so that she could put it in this letter. At that point I knew this had gone way too far. And I was feeling bad over the fact that I was going to get this woman in trouble. So I finally admitted, quietly, she said, that it's okay to be sad. My mom, dad and grandmother were all very disappointed in me. My mom asked me why I would lie about something like that. I genuinely didn't have an answer for her. Because I didn't know. When I said it, I had no idea it was going to go that far. I didn't know that my mom was going to go all the way to making a formal complaint about it in the few days before she started writing the letter. I was hoping that she'd just sort of let the whole thing go. But she didn't. So I eventually had to fess up. I still feel bad about that to this day, because assuming the counselor was told about this, she had to be wondering why I was trying to get her in trouble. She was a nice lady and didn't do anything wrong, but for whatever reason, I clicked the wrong dialogue choice and quickly realized that I couldn't exactly reload from the save. Don't beat yourself up about it. It's totally normal for kids to push boundaries and test out scenarios. 
it's how they learn. I had a similar experience where I was just goofing with my cousins about seeing a man peeking in the window from outside, which eventually escalated to police searching the area with guns drawn. I let the situation spiral out of control initially out of curiosity and then out of fear. You did a lot more than most people by actually fessing up before it became too serious. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.